Aida for wanting my own room? I, 24F, and my fiancé, 25M, are moving into a small three-bedroom house together in a couple of months. Ehad never had my own room growing up and share a room with a roommate in my current living situation to save up money. I always felt the need to share and felt guilty when I wanted to be alone in my room but couldn't since someone else was there. The only time I had a room all to myself was when my roommate or sibling was away. Even so, I didn't feel like I truly had a room to myself. When discussing the use for one of the spare rooms in our soon-to-be house, I mentioned wanting Todernet into a bedroom for myself when I want to be one. My fiancé was confused and said he wanted to house the spare room for an at-home gym instead. Theother spare room will be an office for when fiancé needs to work from home. I argued that Heelready has a claim over one of the spare rooms and he should be allowed to use the other one for myself. I told him that I was looking forward to having a space all to myself, where I can be alone when I want, and am the only person that has access to. He argued that the point of moving in together was to share everything with each other and not just coexist in the same space. He said he would change his mind on wanting a gym if we agreed to turn the second room into a guest bedroom that both of us can use when we want to buy in our own space. I feel like I would still be sharing. If I have a room to myself to use and Hewens to be alone at times, I can just go into my own room and give him the space he wants. Be splitting expenses 50-50 so I don't think I am being that unreasonable. Aida for wanting to have my own room? Aida for yelling at my husband to leave me alone because he made an unjustified weight comment. Let me preface this by saying I'm 5 feet 2 inches and 120 pounds. I am completely happy with my weight and the way I look. I'm also health conscious but late night snacks are a vice for me. Mind you, we keep a snack bin in our room because I have an endocrine disorder which messes with my insulin, it's called p -cuz. People with it experience intense food cravings, typically sugar. I regulate the cr with exercise. He also has an endocrine disorder and he frequently wake up to him munching on something. I've even woken up to food wrappers in my bed and all I say is, can you please throw these away? It's something I thought we had accepted with one another. So at 5.30 this morning, he wakes up to my crunching on crackers while sitting on the corner of my bed. He sleeps heavy, so I was shocked I woke him. He responded, why are you eating right now? I say, I'm sorry. I haven't been able to sleep all night and now I'm hungry. To which he says, for someone who is concerned about their weight, this is the worst time to be eating. I have said minor comments in the past like, these pants make my outlook huge, or, maybe this is not the most flattering shirt because you can see my stomach, it don't think I'm fat. I respond, stop picking on me, at this point I'm agitated. He says, I'm your husband and I'm trying to help you, it's not healthy. I say, leave me alone and go back to sleep. He storms out of the room and insists I'm being mean to him. All the while I'm apologizing asking him not. I can completely understand how the crunch noise could be annoying. However, couldn't he have just said, please go eat in the other room, or try to be more quiet? So, I ate a here for waking him up or each the SS hole by saying he's helping me. BTW I would have happily moved to the other room if had old me to please put those away or got eat somewhere else. I just feel like this gaslighting edit there are pieces left out here to make the post shorter so let me clarify he's acting as though i have asked him to watch what i eat i have never asked him to monitor what i eat he is saying that i am saying and doing things i never did and then makes me feel bad because i'm calling him out on that he's using helping me in defense to say rude hit when he's annoyed i've never asked him to help me and he's acting as if i did look i never claimed to be a psychologist pipe down. If I got it wrong I got it wrong. Sorry. Aida for no longer wanted to go over to my in-laws after they refused to let me get in their pool? I-24F and my BF-23 meters were invited to a football draft pool party at his parents' house. They had just moved to Florida so everyone flew in to drafter their players. They just bought a new Hussein Florida and now have a pool. His parents invited my BF and I over since my BF is in charge of the draft and because we live in an apartment and needed a bigger place to host the party. His dad usually hosts the party and offered to do it this past year which we greatly appreciated. Anyways, fast forward I helped put together a board where the guys can write their players on every round and helped my BF's mom set up the food. The party started and I changed into my swimsuit. 
I was finishing up setting up the food with his when my BF asked me to come outside. He wanted Mado get in the pool. I'd like to note I was wearing a one piece that was not revealing as I wanted to respect everyone there plus I felt more comfortable in it anyways. I have body image issues. When I was unbuttoning my shorts his dad called mine side. My BF's dad and mom pulled me into their room and proceeded to tell me that no women are allowed in the pool. The reason is because they didn't want to distract the men or make the moon calm affordable. I was in shock and didn't know what to say back. It was their home after all so I just said okay and didn't press any further. Fast forward and my BF isisking me where I am via text and I tell him I'm inside helping his mom still but he insisted I come outside again to talk. He tells me to get in again and I keep telling him I don't want to, trying Noto make a scene or play victim. He noticed my odd behavior and when I finally told him the truth he was ist. He told his parents they were outaline and that the rule was unnecessary and stupid. They still said no to me getting in the pool. The next day we are going home and I brought up how we felt. I felt small, disrespected and frankly embarrassed. I further explained that his parents were extreme inconsiderate for invited us over and never telling us this rule that they suddenly made. He told me that they are old school and it told him that they were ignorant and inconsiderate and that I didn't feel comfortable going over. Again. He told me I was being over dramatic. Ada for not wanting to go over to my in-laws anymore? Aida for refusing to lower the volume of my voice when I'm happy even though it hurts my partner's ears? I am Latina and he's from a country where people air more quiet. My husband been irritable lately, I asked him what was going on and he said that whenever I'm with my family and I get happy or excited I get very loud and the noise hurts high ears and it makes him irritable. Hence, why he gets rude. I told him he was being unreasonable and he should suck it up, if he thinks the noise is too loud he should leave the room but not tell me to keep it down when I'm with my family and friends. It told him, it's cool if he gives me a signal to keep the volume lower when I'm with his friends and family but not when I'm with mine. My family and friends are the few spaces where I can safely and comfortably be my loud Latina self. He thinks I'm being in awe for refusing to lower my voice when he's around with my friends and family. That is not too much to ask because my loud voice hurts his ears, but for me the volume of my voice is a pivotal part of my expression. I told him no, that he should suck it up or leave the room. Am I the ah? Edit. Yes, I am just loud when I am with my family and friends. Not when it's just him and I, I told him total me when I am being loud on the phone at home. Edit 2. Most of family are loud. I asked him about a particular aunt who is incredibly loud and famous in the family for being so. He said her loudness doesn't bug him or the rest, just my loudness. Edit 3. This loudness doesn't happen in our home. It happens in my parents' home or at my family. Members' homes. No one ever comes and visit. An does not oblige to come to family gatherings. It told him he can leave the room but he's embarrassed that my family will know that he's leaving the room because he doesn't like loudness. Edit 4. We've been together for 10 years and yes, I was loud from the very start. Edit 5. I am not loud when we fight, I am the complete opposite I am quiet and calm. Edit 6. Redundant and necessary. Loudness only happens when I'm happy and exited. Edit 7. For those who say that being Latina has nothing to do with loudness, since I was a child I've been going to markets where there's tens of people asking the person for something. The only way to buy your stuff is getting louder and asking for it. It is a cultural thing, if many of you are half Latinos but weren't raised in a Latin country then you probably missed out this. In school Siandidas with zillions of kids and everybody screaming at the same time to order their food. Family gatherings is speaking over the other person to be able to talk. We don't see it wrong at ISP art of a culture, different to those in the Northern Hemisphere. Edit 8. He's not autistic. I ate up for not wanting my deaf daughter on the special cheer team? So I, 38M, have three kids who are all cheerleaders, 15 and 16 year old boys and an 11 year old girl. My boys are hearing and my daughter is deaf. She can't speak at all or lip read, she communicates solely through ASL. However, she is neurotypical and has no mental or developmental delays. She's been cheerleading since she was three and is very talented. On her old team she was a flyer and doing very advanced stunts and tricks. At our old cheer gym she was on the level 5 junior team which is very high and they said that she should be moved up to level 6. But we moved over the summer and now there is only one cheer gym within an hour of us. When my daughter tried out she was just as good if not beyond the other girls in her age group and I really thought she would make one of the higher teams as they kept using her as an example for the other girls. 
but then after I was pulled aside by the coaches and told that they thought it was best for her to be on the abilities team. I never heard of that and the way they described it was that it was a team specifically for cheerleaders with disabilities to make it more inclusive. I wasn't fully aware what it meant but I said that was okay. But now I'm aware that this team is for kids who are neurodiverse or unable to participate in normal cheer. There are also older girls on the team, who also compete on their own team, who are helpers. Since my daughter is completely fine other than her look of hearing she usually has to help out the other kids most of whom are much older than her. I am very upset by the level of difficulty is far lower than what she was doing at the old gym. And she didn't volunteer to be a teacher or aid for disabled kids, she wants to be a cheerleader. And being on this team has made her worse, not better. My boys have to work with her in the backyard every day to ensure she's not losing any of her skills that she used to do. Right now my son interprets her since her practice are right after his and it works fine. But Ivy offered them to pay for a real interpreter. But he say they fear her being on a real team would make it harder for the other kids on the team. Thesis ridiculous because she's become good friends with the girls her age on the normal team and they've been very accepting even picking up some signs for her and inviting her to their team. Hangouts and sleepovers. The season is mostly over so there's not much to do now but I told the head coach yesterday that if my daughter isn't on the level 6 team next year I'm taking all three of my kids to a new gym. They need my boys since it's very hard to find boys of their skill level in cheer. They accused me of being ableist and thinking of the abilities team as lower. They think I'm in denial that I have a disabled kid. And I should be grateful they let her in any team. I don't want to be mean or ableist but the team she is on is far below her skill level and he don't want her disability holding her back when IT doesn't have to. So Aida?